All right, another uh, great place to find some NMR practice problems is this Notre Dame website. So I've linked this um, in the work along problems along with the key. Um, the, this key for, for uh, these sets of problems is really good because they really break down um, the problem for you, right? They tell you where each one of these hydrogens is represented, um, which each carbon peak is, that kind of thing, right? So what you do is over here, you go over here, you click left and you click do the problems. And when you do the problems, this will show up. Again, here, we're just gonna stick with the easy problems. We're not gonna go into the intermediate problems. And so then you just click this one. For example, I'm gonna click 27. So I've clicked 27. It might not look like anything has happened, but this whole left side here has changed, right? And so it says problem 27 and gives you the formula and whatnot. So in this case, we have C8H19N. Right, and so that looks like a big structure. I mean, eight carbons, that's quite a bit. Um, we've got a nitrogen there. So this might look like it's gonna be quite complex. So let's go ahead and break it down. Um, think about the first thing you think about is degrees of unsaturization. Uh, this can have up to 18 hydrogens and then plus another one from the nitrogen. Um, and so this is fully saturated. There are no degrees of unsaturization here. So um, that might seem to make the, the problem a bit more complex. And you can see different spectra for here. Uh, the mass spec isn't gonna be terribly useful. You could do some kind of fragmentation with it if you really want to, but it's honestly not that useful. Um, we see that our mass ion peak is an odd number. So that indicates that nitrogen, but that was already told to us um, through the formula. So that's not really that useful there. Gonna click over here to the IR spectra. So here's our IR spectra. You can see he labels it all nicely for you. Um, you can see we have some peaks below 1500, right? We're just gonna straight up ignore those. We have nothing in the double bond region, which is kind of what we would expect because uh, we have no degrees of unsaturization. Uh, we have our CH peaks, right? Something that we would expect, uh, not really that helpful. And then he very nicely labels this 3410 peak, right? This broad 3410 peak. We don't have an oxygen, so it can't be an alcohol. So it has to be an amine, right? It has to be an NH bond. And if you look at it, it looks like there's only one hump. And so that probably points to a secondary amine, right? So it's probably a nitrogen with an H and then two R groups attached to it. Let's next go into the carbon 13 NMR, right? Um, and uh, explore that. So you can see he nicely uh, does not label the uh, solvent peak for you, right? That's that triplet that we see from the chloroform. Uh, so just ignore that around 77. And as we expect all of our, um, Carbons are pretty upfield because we don't have any double bonds and we don't have very, uh, yeah, we don't have any double bonds. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. And you can see this gives you an additional piece of data as well. So one thing that should be kind of screaming out at you is that we have eight carbons, but we only have four peaks. Right, and so this reflects some level of symmetry. We have some symmetry here, right? Um, that, that can help us out. And so then we have this, uh, the, the chemical shift right next to a letter. So think about what that letter means. The T stands for a triplet. And that means that it's a CH2 group, right? CH2, this is also a CH2. This is also a CH2. And then a quartet that has uh, three neighbors. So that's a CH3, right? And so. I mean, naturally, maybe if you gotta kind of put it together, right? You're thinking, all right, maybe um, these guys will all be linked together uh, in a straight chain, but we don't know that yet. We'll see. I think that's pretty much all the info that we can pull out from the carbon NMR. Let's go ahead and take out, take a look at the proton NMR, right? Where we spend the bulk of our time. And so you can see uh, what he does here is very nicely uh, labels these peaks for you, right? Tells you how many protons there are. And then if you click it, you can zoom in. So we're gonna click on this 4H one all the way to the left here. And we can see there. So we're gonna go ahead and write that down about 2.5. Chemical shift, and it represents four protons. And it's a triplet. Let's go ahead, and write that down. And then we can zoom out. And then we'll zoom into this other peak, right? And so um, we can see we've got two 4H multiplets around 1. Point, maybe 3 and like 1.45. Let's go 1.35, 1.45. They're both 4Hs. And they're either both multiplets or you can try to count um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. One is a sextet. The lower one, this is a sextet. 
And then the other one, one, two, three, four, five is a pentet, right? Or you can just call them multiplets as well. We have a one H that exchanges, right? One H that exchanges, we learned that that was our amine peak, right? So we have another piece of evidence that this is a secondary amine because we only have one hydrogen that exchanges. And then finally, we have a 6H triplet right around uh, 0.9. Right. All right. So we've got uh, quite a few things to, to unravel here. Remember, what we're looking at is an NH with two R groups on the side, and we have some level of symmetry. Um, we have four very similar protons. And then let's think about what we can pull out from this other information. So this 4H triplet, um, that means that it has two neighbors. This sextet means it has five neighbors. This pentet means it has four neighbors. And then this triplet means that it has two neighbors. All right, so now we have to figure out how to get through to this. Um, and then remember, there's some symmetry element here. We have four peaks, we have four carbons. So we can pretty much surmise that these R, R groups are the same, right? That's the only way you're going to get nice and equal symmetry, right? We have to have symmetry right down the line. Uh, and so this R1 is the same thing as this R1. And so we can reduce this down and think about this as 2, 2, 2, and 3. So that's looking pretty good uh, there so far. If we think about which one's the furthest upfield, it's 2.5. So that one's got to be right next to the nitrogen. Let's make that into a purple. And it's two H's, right? That's the integration. And then it has two neighbors on it, two neighbors. Cool. All right. So uh, we have to keep working there. Um, so then we've got this blue one, right? We're thinking about what this blue one could be. Um, so it's got two neighbors over here, right? If we try to put three neighbors on this side will end the chain. And we need a fourth carbon, right, to have that symmetry there. So we can't have that be there. So we've got to put another CH2. We can't put a ring. We can't put any other element. We can't have pretty much anything else. Um, and so if we think about what this blue one would be, what this blue one would be, it's got four neighbors. So that's probably looking to be like our pentet, our pentet. And then if we think about it, we've got one more carbon to go. There's really only one thing we can do to end this chain, and it'll be a CH3, right? We put a CH3 there, um, and then we can examine this green colored one. It's got five neighbors, so it'll probably show up as a sextet, which looks good right there. And then finally, we've got this CH3 with two neighbors. That would be a triplet, right? And so um, you should be able to piece these things together. and recognize that this will be our final compound, right? Dibutylamine. Um, again, the really the main clues here were from the IR grabbing that there's a secondary hydrogen, also the, the proton NMR or secondary nitrogen. Uh, the proton N NMR also pointed us toward that. And then the carbon NMR gave us a big clue with, these, with this symmetry. And then the fact that it's CH2, 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 CH3, right? You could probably link it right there. Um, and then the proton NMR also gave us a big hand in the fact that telling us that there was going to be practically perfect symmetry, um, right, going right down the molecule. And then the neighboring or the, the peak structure should be able to tell you which one is which. Again, really, the secret to solving NMR problems is practice, practice, practice. <laughs>